Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about creating a self-signed certificate using IIS. To help keep the length of this video manageable, I'm going to ask that everyone refer to the lab file for more information on why we would do a self-signed certificate up in IIS and what the advantages and the disadvantages are. For this demonstration, I will be using Server 2016, but the procedure is exactly the same for Server 2012. Now I'm up inside of Server Manager and I'm going to need an installation of IIS. To begin this process, I'm going to click on Manage. I'm going to go to Add Roles and Features. We're going to quickly step through the wizard until we get down to the required roles that we need. I've got the right server selected. We're going to go ahead and say Next. And here underneath the roles, I'm going to scroll on down till I come to Web Server IIS. I'm going to check that box. We're going to add the features, and we're going to click Next. We're going to click Next again. Here's some information about IIS. We're going to click Next. On this next page, we see the additional role services we can install for IIS. We don't need any, so let's just click Next. Say Next, and we're going to click on the Install button. This begins the installation process for Web Services IIS. The installation has completed, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Close button. That brings us back to Server Manager. We're now ready to begin the process of creating that self-signed certificate. To do this, I'm just going to go to Tools, and I'm going to scroll on down here to where it says Internet Information Services IIS Manager. We're going to click on that. That's going to open up the IIS Management Console. I've made the console window go full screen. And we're going to begin by clicking on the name of our server. Inside the center window, we're going to find server certificates. Once you've located server certificates, go ahead and just double click it. Over to the far right where it says Actions, we're going to click on where it says Create a Self-Signed Certificate. On this first page of the wizard, we need to come up with a user-friendly name for our certificate. Now, I recommend that you think about how you're going to apply this certificate and you name it so that you can easily recognize it. So I'm going to call this one application underscore testing. Now this is going to be a personal certificate. If this was going to be assigned to a web server, then I would pull down the window and I would select web hosting. All we have to do now is just click on the OK button and our certificate now appears in the center window pane. So the name of my self-signed certificate is application underscore testing and it was issued to DC1 and it was issued by DC1. Here's the expiration date. It's usually about a year out from the time the self-signed certificate is issued. We're now ready to make our way to the certificate store so that we can view the certificate. Make sure you click inside the window of your Server 2016. And now you're going to hold down the Windows key and hit R at the same time. This brings up the run line. So that we can get to the certificate store, we first need to get up inside of the Microsoft Management Console. To do this, where it says Open, I'm going to type in MMC. I'm going to hit Enter. That brings up the Microsoft Management Console. Up inside of the Microsoft Management Console, we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Add, Remove, Snap-In. On this next window, underneath the available snap-ins, we're going to find Certificates and we're going to click on Add. We're going to accept the default for my user account, and we're going to click Finish. We're now going to click OK. Notice that the Certificate Store is now available to us up inside of the Microsoft Management Console. We can now expand the Certificates Store, and here we'll see all the different containers that are available for all the different certificates that we have available to us. I've expanded the left window pane just a little bit so you can see what's going on. Now, if we go to the Trusted Root Certification Authorities and we expand that and click on Certificates, over in the left window pane, you will see the certificate that we created. It's called dc1.us.cyberoffense.com. We're now going to deploy or export this certificate to our desktop. To do this, I'm just going to right click on the name of the certificate. Go to All Tasks and select Export. This brings up the Certificate Export Wizard. We're just going to step through it. Click Next. Yes, I want to export the private key. We're going to select that option. We're going to click Next. We're going to leave the defaults here. Everything's checked for us already. 
click next and here we're going to create a password for the certificate I'm going to check the password box now I'm going to type in a password the users will need this password to be able to install the certificate locally into their certificate store once I have my password typed in I'm going to click next this next step might be a little confusing but we're not going to type in a file name yet we're first going to click on the browse button I need to save the certificate to my desktop so I'm going to select the desktop as my destination and now where it says file name I can now give this certificate a file name I've given this file the name of application so I'm going to click on save that brings me back to that box for the file name we're going to click on next we're now ready to click the finish button so let's go ahead and do that and the export was successful before we minimize our console window let's go ahead and take a look at the certificate now you can take a look at this certificate by just double clicking it and this tells you all about it you got the details the certificate path all that good stuff that users would want to know about before they install this certificate we're now ready to minimize our console window and we're back up inside of the IIS management console to bind this certificate to a site or sites up inside of IIS I'm just going to expand the sites container and you see that I have a default website we're just going to click on that and over here all the way to the right underneath the actions window we can click on bindings we can now click on add in the add site bindings window we're going to pull down the type and we're going to select HTTPS we're going to leave everything up there as a default underneath the host name we're going to type in the exact name that we gave the certificate when we created it where it says SSL certificate we're going to pull down that window and we're going to select the name of the certificate we created it was called application testing I'm now going to select I'm going to say OK I'm now going to say OK and you'll notice that our certificate is now bound to our default website now one of the disadvantages of using a self-signed certificate created up inside of IIS is that we don't have the automation that we get with the PKI infrastructure with a PKI infrastructure that is to say a certificate server we could direct users to the web page for that certificate server and they could automatically download and install that certificate but in our case since we're using a self-signed certificate it's not going to be trusted by any web browser so when the user does come to the website they will see this warning and they'll have the option to be able to continue on to the website but each time they come to the website they're going to have to step through this process unless we install or they install the certificate into their local certificate store we can go ahead and close this out I'm going to go ahead and minimize this minimize this and we're back to our desktop and here we see the certificate that we exported if you right click on it you'll see that you can open the certificate to view it but you can also install the certificate so if we were to make this certificate available onto a user's desktop we could then install the certificate into the user certificate store inside the trusted certification authority container that way each time the user accesses the internal website they will not be told that the certificate comes from an untrusted source to do this all they have to do is right click and select install like so and they can step through the wizard current user that is correct next this is just confirming the path to the certificate that is sitting on the user's desktop we now have to type in the certificate password that we created when we generated the self-signed certificate once we've typed in the certificate password we can leave everything else as the default and click on the next button on this next screen we have to move the radio button down to the second option to place all certificates in the following store we now click on the browse button we need to import the certificate into the same container that we exported it from on our server to do this we just select the trusted root certification authorities click OK you can click next and now you have the completing the certificate import wizard 
once you click finish you will be told that the import was successful so in this video demonstration you got to see how we go about creating a self-signed certificate using iis and now that was pretty down and dirty and we didn't have to worry about creating our pki or creating a certificate service to run on our network and so an application of this sort is fine if we need a certificate very quickly to allow an application to run or to allow users to have access to a website now the caveat about all this is that this is great for internal we wouldn't want to be doing this for an external web server or any application that has to be trusted outside of our network with that being said users should never install a certificate from an unknown source in practice you should only install a certificate locally if you generated it because no legitimate website would require you to perform such steps as we performed in getting this certificate accepted by our browser one last thing before we get out of here this certificate warning that we're seeing up here inside of the browser when a user accesses the website for the first time that is going to be shown to you inside of ie and chrome now for firefox it's completely different because firefox does not access the windows certificate stores for firefox you'll need to go into your trusted sites and add this website as an exception that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about creating a self-signed certificate so if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the content of this video or any of the information inside the lab file, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.